Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a frequency distribution table using the pivot table tool. I have another video that does exactly the same thing using formulas. You can find the link for that in the description box below. But this video shows you how to use the pivot table tool in order to create a frequency table and the charts that accompany it. This is a lot easier and a lot faster than using formulas. On the other hand, formulas give you the advantage of updating if your source data changes. With a pivot table, once you create it, it stays the way it is even if the source data is changed. So let's take a look at how to do this. We're going to use major to create a pivot table. So let's highlight the column with the majors and we can do that by pressing control, shift and the down key and let's say insert pivot table we want a new worksheet check the range the range is the correct range and then click OK and we have a new worksheet with the pivot table this is so much easier than using formulas here is the pivot table and there's only one field the field is major so let's drag and drop that to where it says rows and there we have our pivot table we need to do one more thing and that is to drag and drop the major to the values area and that's it we have our pivot table if you watched my video on how to do this using formulas you will appreciate how much faster and simpler this method is the problem of course is going back to the raw data if the raw data changes this table remains the same it doesn't change it does not update if you use the formulas method then anytime the raw data changes the numbers would be updated so if you have not 50 students but 55 students it would be updated in the table using formulas not using the pivot table but all is not lost you would have to do it by right clicking in the cells so let's right click in the cells and you see where it says refresh you would click on refresh and then it would update so it would have to be updated manually all right let's rename the column headings and so let's rename this heading to major call this major and let's rename this heading frequency so now we have a table with the frequencies we want to create another column for relative frequencies and percent frequencies so click in a cell here to get the pivot table fields take the major and drag it down to the values area two more times so now we have one, two, three times. So we have three columns. Let's rename the heading here relative frequency. And let's rename this heading percentage. And I'm just going to drag this over so it has a little more space for the heading. Uh, this one is fine. Now we have relative frequency. Click on any cell here, right click and scroll down to where it says show values as and you can see lots of choices let's choose percent of column total now we need to change this to a decimal so let's go to the number formatting and change that to four decimal places all right let's do that for the rest of the cells right click show values as percent of column and then we want to go here and change that to number all right and now it's in relative frequencies these we want as percentages so we will click on show values as percent of column total and that gives it to us as a percentage how easy was that that was so much easier than using the formulas that's it that if you looked at my video on how to do the same thing using formulas you'll see how much faster this was you don't have to worry about absolute cell references or relative cell references the table does it for you okay and now we can build a chart off of the pivot table the problem here is you can't select individual columns when we built the table from the formulas we could select by holding down the control key we could select individual columns with the pivot table it takes the entire table so let me show you what I mean if we take a chart off of this we go to insert and we say chart 
you can see that it has everything there, relative frequency, percentages, and so on. And we have the blue lines are great, but then we have relative and percentage like that, and it just doesn't make any sense. So if you want to make a chart of frequency and another chart, relative frequency and another chart for percentage, what you would need to do is to make separate uh, pivot tables. So the way to fix that is, to, let's say, copy and then uh, paste the table here. And we'll do it again. Paste the table here. Okay. And now for this table, let's get rid of the relative. Just drag it off and the percentage. Okay, so now we have a table. By the way, to get rid of these marching ants or dancing ants, just hit the escape key. It's sometimes annoying when you see the dancing ants around. Just hit escape and they go away. Okay, so now we have a pivot table for frequency. Here we have, again, the same table. Let's get rid of the frequency and just keep the relative frequency. So we're going to go to the right here and drag off frequency and drag off percentage. And now we have a table of just relative frequency. And then going to this table here, we just want the percentage. So back to the pivot table, the frequency, and take off the relative frequency just by dragging it off. And it leaves it with just the percentage. So now we have three pivot tables, one with frequency, one with relative frequency, and one with percentage. And now we can create a chart from each of these Go to the chart. This one is for frequency. And I'm not going to bother formatting it. We can do one for relative frequency. Insert. Go to the cluster, uh, cluster column. And here we have relative frequency. Okay, so we put the frequency here. I'm going to make it a little smaller so it fits. Make this a little smaller also so it fits here. Okay, so we have frequency, relative frequency, and then select the percentage, insert, and 2D. And so now you have the charts in the various formats. The display of the data doesn't change. What changes is the y-axis. The vertical axis changes. This one you can see is percentage. This one, the axis is by frequency. And this one, it is by relative frequency. So again, if you took the entire chart the way it was with frequency, relative frequency, and percentage, you get a very strange looking chart. You have to recreate the tables one at a time and then create the charts off of those individual tables. You can't do them all together. This still took a lot faster than using the formulas. It's a lot faster, it's a lot easier, and less likely to make mistakes. So that's it. You can create many different types of charts from the pivot table. Uh, just play around with it. Again, right, right click and say change chart type, and you can see all the different types of charts that you can create. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something.